Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about hearing God's voice, the Lord's voice, Jesus' voice, the Holy Spirit's voice. He... So I'm going to dive into some scriptures that the Lord, this, this is just one way He's been dealing with me lately, He's been in dreams. It used to be a lot of visions, um, and then He's changed it to dreams, so He'll actually give me scriptures, but I'm going to kind of intertwine it into what He's what I'm hearing from, the, some of the directions he's given me. Um, we all have a purpose, and we all can hear from the Lord if we ask. He wants to have that communication with us. It's up to us, of course. But anyhow, here's a scripture that he gave me in a dream. And I'll tell you what happened and transpired from this. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due His name. Psalms 29. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. I got that scripture right before He sent us on a trip. I live in Dallas. And he told me to go to this little town in Pennsylvania. I had to Google it to see if it even existed. He gave me the name and everything. And it does exist. And that's 4,000 people. And he was like, and he told me to do some specific things up there. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, oh, you know, really? I mean, we just came back from a trip. We went all over Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas. And it was the same thing. God highlighted certain cities, certain people, and then there was intersections with others that weren't highlighted, but it was just a culmination thing. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you, but we're His glory. That's one of my messages. Listen to it. And we're His voice on this earth. I've been, the part about the thunder kind of caught me a little bit, um, which, because I was raised in Minnesota, and I, there's some cool storms up there, guys, in the summertime, like just thunderous, just rolling thunder, like pretty awesome, really, I used to love to sit and watch and listen to the storms coming, um, just because of the lightning and thunder, and just, what seemed like chaos really wasn't, but, you know, it was just, it was awesome, but, or his voice. So when we hear his voice, he wants us to do something with it. And it's not by works. We're just the vessel. But we have to portray out in this lost and dying world who Jesus really is. That's what God's message is. Jesus, that's his, his son, was his salvation plan for mankind. We have to portray that. We have to be his voice. You know, you in the natural, normal realm, turn on the news, today it's election day, that's all you hear, make your voice known, vote, 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 okay, well, great, awesome, necessary, should you, yes, but I'm not trying to politicize this, I'm just saying, the reality of it is, we're God's voice on this earth. So he wants us to use it. So what's he telling you? You know, that's why he gives you two ears, two eyes to see, to read his word, but one mouth. But he wants you to use, be vocal to the world. That's the true gospel. All of us also are called to minister the gospel, whether it's to our children, co-workers, people at school, guy at 7-Eleven, or wherever, you know, Subway, you know they're not making any money. They're probably having a bad day. Some re a lot of retailers don't pay squat. Those, you know, we expect the, those people to live off of nothing, you know? So encourage them. Uplift them. Pray for them. Talk to them. I know what God, what... You're hearing God's voice, and He wants you to use your voice. So, anyhow, what He's been dealing with me on... I wrote a book about visions. It's not me. It's not even the book. They're just 
I spent nine months going through the Bible. My my, my wife would be like, "Where? Are, what are you doing?" And you're studying again because I want to put scripture with it because I didn't want to just be blank visions that some goofball guy had because I get all kinds of strange looks from everything from good to bad but I don't care I'm his vessel I'm going to just do what he told me to do he told me to write the book and I did you can get a free copy email me at steve youngstrom at yahoo.com it's not and he told me specifically to not interpret it because he didn't want man's interpretation so apparently I was going to mess it up a little bit not the visions but the interpretation because he said it's for the individual reader so they're awesome and they won't cost you nothing to email me your address you're not going to get junk mail hey you're not going to get anything else i'm not even going to use your email again ever i'm not that technically savvy anyhow but i'm not going to ask for an offering i'm not going to ask you to read anything else study just a free book copy it but anyhow he started changing the dreams he been giving me specific scriptures and dreams. This was one of them, but he's been giving me a lot of them. He gave me Romans 8, 27 the other night. And all of Romans 8. It's about your glory. It's about the Holy Ghost. about how he utters things that we don't even know, but, but God knows. Because he searches the heart. He knows the intent. So, we're given that comfort. So, we're his voice, guys use it he wants us to use it but anyhow i'm gonna dive into a little bit more of this trip where he's been taking us sounds cool maybe it, it is it is and it isn't it was cool to see people's lives changed what wasn't cool was all the stuff we had to do to get there we were on the road for 14 days and on day 11 both me and my wife my wife really was you know almost in tears wanting to come home she had had enough she was tired and we really needed a rest and it was supposed to be a rest and it was a rest mixed in with things that god told us to do and so some some was rest and some wasn't wasn't laborious but it, yet it was a little bit you know just i mean driving for hours on end to get to what you know pennsylvania's 1700 miles away so day 11 we wanted, both of us decided we, you know, I wanted to come home too. Three days. Took us to get home. Three, eight, nine hour days. I'm like, man, God, I just wanted to get home. But it was awesome. And God did some miraculous, awesome things. Intersected with us with different people's lives. We went up there to Knoxville to meet a minister. Had a church and a bar. What a concept, huh? But he was an awesome, mighty man of God, and his wife was too, a woman of God. I know they're going to do something awesome with that. I, you know, I don't care that's in a bar, you know? That's where God sent him. So, we ministered to him. But the day that we ministered to him, what I would do is go out early in the morning. The Lord would wake me up. He woke me up at like 4.35 pretty much every day, but he woke me up in Knoxville and I was like okay God I, so I'd go out in, the lobby, out in the lobby most of the hotels we stayed in had decent lobbies and we'd say at Best Western and Quality Inn or whatever Comfort Inn or whatever nothing like super expensive but most of them had a lobby area and that's where I'd sit and drink my coffee and pray and kind of watch people and stuff too but I but but my prayer would be God here I am hundreds of miles away from home I don't want to search I don't want to be me and search for somebody to minister to you send them to me you intersect their lives with me and he did sitting there a guy came by and i just talked to him about this he had a sign on the side of his car i talked to him about the sign just kind of conversation and he talked about what he did and what they were doing and within 20 minutes 15 to 10 15 minutes i was ministering to him and his wife came ministering to her. Then his father-in-law came ministering to him and his wife. About an hour. The gospel. Whatever God told me to lay to, to lay before him. Well, this was just one story. I'm going to tell you two. There was maybe 20. Not a lot. 
kind of like, man, God, we went thousands of miles, spent thousands of dollars, days. You know, my, my flesh is like, man, was it worth it? Yes, it was. Because we really rocked, changed some people's world. Because up there is a lot of religiosity. People don't hear about Jesus. Jesus is taken out of the equation of the church. It's all about hierarchy and power, and I'm way up here, and you're way down here. It's just not a lot of freedom in the spirit. So anyhow, but so I prayed for these people. Um, but early in the morning, before I started praying for these people, there was a lady there that I saw. And I don't know if it was a club foot, but she had something really wrong with her, her foot. She had to drag it, like a lot. She was working at 6 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. I was like, her boss comes into work, and she goes over to get her a cup of coffee, and she had to go across the lobby. It took her almost 10 minutes, really, to get that cup of coffee. Dragging her, dragging her whole leg and her foot. You could tell she was in pain. You could tell it was arduous. Very, very, you know, a little troubling, kind of, because I was like, man, God. This poor woman. But she had a smile on her face of joy. And when she gave that cup of coffee to her boss, you could see the servant heart in her and the joy that she had. I was like, man, God, she's full of joy. And her life's kind of full of this crap, this stuff that's plaguing her. Like, wow, God, I really want to pray for this woman. I want to meet her. I talked to her briefly, but it, it just didn't turn into a, in, into a time of ministry or a time to pray. It just didn't. So, then these people came along and I prayed for them for about an hour and then it became about 9 o'clock and that's usually the time me and my wife kind of get together and we start the day. And she, would, she loves to pray in the hotel rooms and I love to pray in the lobby. She just, because our church is pretty big. She goes to a lot of the prayer sets. A lot of people go there. I stay home and pray, but when we're on our trips, she closes off, kind of, and that's her prayer time, her quality time with God, just her, and so, and then I have mine, and I'm out ministering, that's just how God was working it out, well, I wanted to pray for this one, and I thought, man, I kind of missed God, and missed my opportunity when we left, we left 10 o'clock, or started the day, and did, I can't even really remember what we did, we, but we met with those ministers, the minister from Knoxville, that night, we went and took them out for dinner, met with them. Then, we were going to go the next day with them to church, which we did. Now, I know what it was. Let me rephrase that. Um, we went to church that morning so that we did have to leave at 9 o'clock. So that's what was, what was going on. We had to get ready and go. And I thought I missed God. Then that night we took we took the minister out that we were supposed to meet with and connect with. It's a long, long story there, so I'm not going to share it because it's too long. <clears throat> and it was just a, a God ordained deal. Um, just came from there what two weeks ago, but the Lord gave me Knoxville, Tennessee, and I wrote them down in this book. I got about 30 cities, countries, different places, people, even names things that are supposed to transpire and people are supposed to see and go and I mean everywhere from all across the country from Florida to Nome, Alaska you know so it's like man God. but I don't know when how and why and you know where and I mean we still have stuff we have to do work and stuff so it's like man I'm, I'm going to do this God but he's been opening the doors so here we are in Knoxville we church I thought I missed God not ministering to this lady took the, the pastor, um, the minister out, pastor, whatever you want to call him, man of God, um, you know, we really ministered to them, they ministered to us too, it was kind of a combination, it was, just, it was awesome, connections kind of growing a little bit, I don't know where it's all going to land, but, back in April was when God told me to go, when I wrote that down in my book, 4 of 2018, and now we just went, so, I just write them down in the book, these cities and places and things that God tells me to do. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm just, you know, not shelving them, but here they are. So, anyhow, 
This is going to be a little long video, sorry. But, so anyhow, there we are. Coming back from church. Come, I mean, coming back from ministering to the minister. Saw his church in the bar. It was awesome. We prayed in there. Prophesied to him a little bit. He prophesied to us. It was just, it was an awesome time. Kind of pumped. Day was great. Got to see another church. Another, you know, awesome church. If you ever get up there to North, um, Knoxville, it's called North Star. And I think there's another campus. It was, you know, pastor was pretty spot on. It was a good church. Good to see other, you know, other folks in other parts of the country, you know, on fire for Jesus. So, We come back, it's eight, like 8 o'clock at night, 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. There's that woman with the foot problem at the desk with another lady. And it's quiet, and there's no one around, and the place is empty. And my wife is a fireball, too. So, of course she's going to minister to him and talk to him about Jesus. That's who she is. So she just kind of starts in conversation leads into Jesus. She starts ministering to the woman. I thought I missed God. I was kind of a little disappointed, but I didn't miss God. My wife's supposed to be the opportunity. She's supposed to be the voice in this room. I don't care. I just wanted this woman to hear the true gospel. That was my heart. God used my wife instead of me. So what? Jesus' voice too. So, ministered to her long story she ministered to her for a long time and just kind of got the lady's story and really really ministered to this woman a lot the lady was just in tears so I was like okay God that's just how that's just how these trips were that's how they would go but he had some specifics I was supposed to go to a specific town and meet a specific person and see him and I did in Pennsylvania that was one of them but that's all I had was this one town, and we went to North Carolina, we went to West Virginia, we went to, through Kentucky, Tennessee. Um, in Tennessee, the first night we were staying in Tennessee, a little small town, the Lord woke me up at 4.30 in the morning. This is, I'm, I'm going to end this at 20 minutes, I promise. And woke me up at 4.30 in the morning, went out to pray. Had two or three, had a couple cups of coffee, and I was on my third cup, praying and sitting on this bench. Well, I had my Bible next to me. So I get to go up, and I'm like, go get another cup of coffee, and I'm going to take my Bible with me. Because I don't want anybody to, you know, not necessarily that they would steal it, but I just didn't want anybody to take it. It's my favorite Bible. My wife brought it for me. It's, it's, I like my Bible. Personal, specific. Kind of irreplaceable. I give me the Bible, but I didn't want to lose this one. So I went to pick it, reached over to pick it up, and the Lord said, No, it'll be fine. Just leave it right where it is. Okay, not a big deal, but okay, God. Don't get it. Not even really trying to ask Him. Don't understand it. Not even trying to understand it. Just being obedient. Okay, God. Leave it there. So I left it there. He told me it'll be fine. Come back out. There's a guy standing right next to my Bible by the bench. Ministered to him. For an hour and a half. Had I not been obedient to that little detail, hearing the voice of God, then I became his voice. But you know, he ministered to me too. It was kind of a two way street on that one. It was awesome. Sick from six in the morning till seven thirty. So it was just all these little intersections, you know? When we went to when we went to Illinois the Lord told me to go to Stillwater, Oklahoma first. But, but, and it was a little out of the way. And it wasn't really on the path that I was going to take. We were going to go up through Missouri, you know. But we went through Oklahoma instead. So, same thing happened. Early in the morning, people came up to me. I was out there praying. I said, well, Lord, here I am. What do I do now? You know, well, I'm here. Four people came up to me. Out, one guy, 150 feet away, went out to smoke a cigarette. His back turned to me. Turned around and just walked up to me. So, then I became God's voice. So that's how our whole trip was. One, one city, he, he gives me some specifics and some he doesn't, but one city on the second trip told me about a 
to the post office and pray for pray for the pray for the person at the desk. And then he told me to go to the public library and ask the clerk for a book on witchcraft. I'm like, man. I'm not hearing from God on that one. That's crazy. I I'm not doing that. That's just I didn't even tell my wife. I told her we had to go to the library, but I was like, man, what if what if I'm wrong? I what if that's I just I'll be embarrassed, you know, a little bit of fear hit me. I'm like, man, God. But I was obedient. I went to the post office exactly, specifically, like the Lord told me to do, it happened. Ministered to the postal clerk, rocked her world. Bawled, bawled like a baby, hearing the gospel. So I was like, oh, I'm pretty pumped. So I told my wife, I said, now we're supposed to go to the library. So we get to the library. We get to the desk, and I'm like, there's like four or five people there. It's a public library, big place. <clears throat> like four volunteers and only one clerk. I didn't know that. There's, but there's five people back there. I'm like, okay, God, who? So the clerk walks up to us. Can I help you guys? I'm like, man, this is going to sound kind of strange coming from someone like me, but there's any books on witchcraft? And my wife's jaw just dropped because I hadn't told her. She. If you're married, you know that look. It's like, man, I am in trouble. Maybe not this exact second, but soon. I uh, stepped in some doo-doo. You know that look. I'm like, man. But then I look over, and she's praying in tongues. I can see her I can see her moving, her lips moving, and she's praying in tongues. I'm like, yeah, God. This is it. This is awesome. So the lady says, no, that doesn't sound strange. She started looking for this book. She said, my grandparents were warlocks. My aunt was a witch. My, her whole family was in, in, in deep in occultic activity. So, but the Lord gave me some specifics on that one. He said, it's not the book. He said, I want you to go to the aisle. And I'm giving you directions and your wife's going to be my mouthpiece. So I'm like, okay. So I told the lady, I said, I said, I don't really care about the book. I said, can you just take us to the aisle? Sure. So we get to the aisle. She starts telling us her story. She starts crying. She wasn't even into it a minute. But she was a born-again Christian, and she was really, really concerned about a generational curse coming upon her family because of the things that her ancestors were involved in. And she was kind of, she was really distraught. Well, I just jumped right in. became the voice of God. To her. Minister to her for 30, 45 minutes. Aisle in the public library. Somebody that worked there. Nobody bothered us. Interrupted us. Poured into this four months life. Victory and hope. Who she was, identity, all kinds of things in my life. I, I don't remember all of it, but a lot of prophetic stuff. Just good, 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 solid foundational stuff. So where's voice, guys? Are you hearing from him? If you're hearing from him, you're hearing from him for a reason because he wants you to use it because this morning's scripture was Matthew 2, or Timothy 2, uh, 8 through 18, but then a little bit farther on it talks about some vessels in, a, in, a, in the house are made of silver, wood, and some are wood, some are gold, silver, some wood, some for honor, some for dishonor. When we're honorable vessels, we're meat for the master's use. God's got a purpose for it. He's telling you stuff. He's li you listen, if you're listening to him, he's telling you stuff for a purpose. So, we're his voice, guys, on this earth. Let's do it. Just like that Nike commercial. Let's just do it. So anyhow, sorry to be so long. Um, there's way more than I can share. Um, I try to make them short, but and then, and then this didn't really happen. So I hope you tuned into the end of this. But you want to email me, stevejunkstrom at yahoo.com. You can get a copy of the free book. Um, another one's coming out in about probably three months or less. Um, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And how is glory? And I just got tons and tons and tons of scriptures about it, dreams and scriptures that the Lord gave me, and, and, and dreams and you know, read one of the dreams I had, uh, um, Romans eight twenty seven, but it's about the Holy Ghost. But the whole chapter of eight, but at the end of eight it says, 
or who he predestinated, who he foreknew, who he justified, he also glorified. So where's glory, guys? Where's voice? There's a specific purpose. The world may fall apart, come to hell, go to hell. I don't get all the revelation. That's all another chapters and stories and things. But we're going to shine. Businesses may fail all around us, but your business is going to go up. People are going to see us. We're going to be that city that's set upon a hill. We're his glory, guys. If you're listening, he's telling you for a reason. Things maybe to get rid of in your life, things to do, purposes and places to go, people to see. Maybe the guy at the coffee shop, donut shop, Walmart, where you go. Maybe the gas station. There's just a lot to it. It could be a timing issue of you getting in there. There's just a lot to it, guys. But the more you listen, the easier it gets. And he wants you to be his voice. He's calling his people. The ones that are listening. I didn't always listen either. Look, listen, look at some of my stuff. You know, I had a prodigal son experience. Man, that ministering in two different churches. Bad at God for nonsense. My my doing mostly. But I blame God. So anyhow, we love you. Sorry to be so long. I keep going, but you know, I try to keep them to five minutes, and it, it just never really happens. But anyhow, we love you. God bless you. Um, talk to you soon. Please share these with somebody else. Comment on them. Um, just have a great, awesome, wonderful day. And be his voice.